Nancy Dillon to start shooting early in the morning. Yes, I do. I hope the show's a big hit. Thank you for letting me on tonight to talk about the show. I hope everybody will be watching January 30th and Friday. Thank you for I'll be the invitation. There. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> saying goes you can't fight city hall a cliche that he just proved quite a few years ago you can fight city hall and you can fight gm and you can fight the corporations and get something done if you uh, have the perseverance and the moral fiber that ralph nader has um, i'm sure most of you are familiar with the book unsafe at any speed he wrote some years ago which was an indictment of some of the cars that were put out by uh, one of the giant corporations and he he was almost personally responsible single-handedly for making changes in certain laws in this country He's an attorney, he's a leader of several consumer action groups, one of which is Public Citizen, and one of his groups has just turned out this publication called Who Runs Congress? And if you thought you knew, you might be in for a surprise. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Ralph Nader. I don't think we have ever met, really. I've uh, admired your work for many, many years, and I'm delighted we can have a little time to chat here tonight. Um, the book in itself, Who Runs Congress, the average person would say, well, the citizens run Congress, right? We elect the people and send them there, but that, as usual, is not quite the case, is it? No, in, in reality, three factors are most influential. One is campaign money. So expensive to run for re-election, whoever's got the money tends to call the tune. Will that change this year because of the law being changed to certain not, contributions? Not very much. Yeah. Uh, it spreads it out in terms of a lot of smaller contributions under $1,000. But The second is the power of the White House. The White House, particularly when a president willing to use a veto again and again and again, can turn uh, Capitol Hill into withering heights, as it's called, as we call it. In other words, it, uh, the power <coughs> of the presidency is enormous on Congress. They send their lobbyists up there. They can, you know, <coughs> manipulate it. And the third factor is citizen apathy. Uh, that's the big one. I figured out that the average citizen in this country will work about Ralph. two months or more for Congress every year. Love you, Because right? that's the, the amount of taxes that Congress right. imposes and spends. And uh, there aren't enough opportunities for people to spend a day on Congress a year trying to make sure that money is spent wisely and efficiently. How do you get people to do it? You know, you're absolutely right in what you say. Everybody has said one time or another, what's wrong with the country? And then when it comes down to the short strokes, yeah. people are apathetic about joining uh, consumer action groups because they think that they can't do anything. But several things. One they feel they, helpless. And, when they think someone else is doing it for yeah. them, uh, you know, that's what we elected them for. Uh, the second is uh, they don't think they make a difference, even if they did try. Mm -hmm. And that's the cruelest uh, uh, fa facet, because they can make a difference. I mean, all over the country there are citizen groups, Arkansas, California, mm -hmm. Massachusetts, you name it, Chicago, that have uh, pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. They've gone after inequitable property taxes or consumer fraud or pollution. And with virtually no staff and, you know, right. just a lot of guts and, uh, and interest and in gathering the facts and doing something about it, have made tremendous strides. Right. The same is true with Congress. I mean, if you, uh, in an average, uh, let's say, Super Bowl game, you got, I don't know, 40 million people watching it. That's min at minimum. At least. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if, if 40 million people a year spent an average of uh, 10 hours on Congress, that place would really shape up. And when you figure that they're working two or three months a year, you know, to sustain uh, the government in right. Washington, that's not much of a sacrifice. You mean that by letters, writing, and asking, and joining groups, uh, you can bring about changes? Sure, because in the final analysis, the votes are what count, people's votes, right. even though the campaign money gets in the way when the people aren't alert. Right. I wanted to ask you something the other day. I saw this in the paper, and I thought, knew that you were coming on the show. And you find this ambivalence in me. I think people feel helpless and they say, what the hell is going on? Now, I'll probably get letters for this, but let's take a shot at it. I think the federal government just voted something like $60 million subsidy for tobacco growers in this country. Uh, at the same time, the Surgeon General comes out and there's a great campaign to, to get people not to smoke in this country, that it's obviously not good for your health. Uh, and at the same time, they subsidize an industry to promote a product that they at the same time says is bad for your health. Don't you find a strange 
Um, schizophrenia. The <laughs> sense of morality. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, 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 now, the, the, I understand it's, it's money. Tobacco sounds products like are big for Virginia and Kentucky and on but, South Carolina and those states, and we send a lot of tobacco overseas. But at the same time, they're saying, don't smoke. It's terrible and, for your health. Yeah. The Department of Health, Education, and Welfare spends $900,000 a year trying to educate people not to smoke. <laughs> Across the street, the Department of Agriculture is spending $60 million, as you say. $30 million of it to support the sale of cigarettes abroad under the Food for Peace program. How's that? <laughs> uh, now, That's there's no problem, question, yeah. you know, cigarettes are linked to cancer, heart disease, a whole range of, uh, of ailments. And what in the world is the government doing using tax money to promote this sort of thing? And that's what makes people just nod their head in disbelief. Right. I mean, if there is a problem with the tobacco workers and growers, it's better just to, to help them directly tran transfer their efforts into other healthful work and industry. But they would say, mm -hmm. what will we do in those states that are major producers of tobacco? You know, they say that's our, that's our industry. Now, you take that away from us, that leaves us with no industry. I suppose that would be their answer, and rightfully so. Well, that's if you stop, you know, people from smoking, which is you know, another prohibition that nobody really recommends that, because it's an addiction. People right. got to decide themselves to, to stop smoking. But what can be done is to get the government out of promoting it. I mean, right. and to get the government, like in Sweden, now is launching a major campaign, particularly with younger people, try to get them to learn what the consequences of smoking right. are. I mean, I've, uh, I've heard people say... Uh, uh, they're sorry they didn't stop smoking. Right. I've never heard people say they're sorry they did stop smoking. No, that's true. And I'm one of those. I haven't quite done it yet. Well, maybe I ought to get off of that subject. <laughs> <laughs> the book we talked about, I mentioned as you come out here, Unsafe at Any Speed, was a, was a bombshell when it first came out. And most people are aware that General Motors launched a, a rather vicious campaign against you to pry into your personal life to find any peccadillos that might haunt you and they could nail you up on a cross or something and they didn't and you want a large settlement there which which proved that hmm. when you get close to something and, and start hurting them <laughs> they will react rather violently won't they yeah but if uh, if there's enough pressure they'll uh, uh, put out safer cars and that's what's really important i mean you look at all the problems in the country and you just say what are we doing a country like this wealthy uh, intelligent, a lot of science and technology. What are we doing with all these problems? We shouldn't have these problems. We can stop pollution. The economy is fine. We can have a better health system. We can uh, put out products that don't uh, cheat or swindle people. And it's all a matter of getting consumers and citizens really affected. I mean, that's the key thing, because if they're all out there unorganized, uh, it's not going to happen. And if people think that's dull and, you know, that's something that's impossible, they don't understand what that Constitution gives them. That Constitution gives them rights that they can really refine and hone right in their own community and city and state, nation, to get these problems resolved. In other words, if a manufacturer, for example, puts out a product that is, uh, is bad or false or misleading, it doesn't work, then the citizens' action groups have redress in some way. In other words, sure. they don't buy the product or they get together and... Or, for example, they can uh, get uh, the right to uh, sue the manufacturer as a consumer class. If somebody's cheated for 10 bucks from a mail order house, uh, you can't go to a lawyer on that, right. you know. But if uh, 300,000 people are cheated for, in an average of 10 bucks and they have the right to sue as a consumer group, then they're going to get a uh, redress. It's a matter of not just getting more information out to people, because people now are learning more about nutrition, so they're learning what to buy in the supermarket a little more astutely. Uh, but it's also getting the government to do what it's supposed to be doing. You know, all these politicians are really amazing. They lower everybody's expectation. That's the style these days. You know, they make these inaugural addresses and they say, you mustn't expect too much of government. Lower your expectation. That's another way of saying, uh, don't make me responsible for what I'm doing or not doing. So they lower people's expectation. The fact is, they don't lower the taxes. You know, the taxes are still coming in and government's got, uh, got a mission to perform here. And, uh, you know, it's up to the public. Right, let's come back and pick up some specifics. Sure. Take a break. We'll be right, right back. 714-9882 or visit MiracleBambooBra.com for $19.99 and we'll triple the offer. That's 1-800-714-9882 or log on to MiracleBambooBra.com. Order now. Now, let's talk about the uh, public utilities. You talked thing about the Chekhov thing. The average American citizen is uh, feels hopeless anyway when they deal with utilities in general. They get the bill. They really don't know what it's for. They don't know how the charges are set. How do, how do people handle 
The first thing is to find a way to organize the residential utility consumers. And what uh, we're proposing is a, a very simple thing. It's, it's to provide a voluntary checkoff system on your monthly utility bill. So you get your telephone, electric, or gas bill. And there's a little checkoff that you want to make a contribution to, say, a statewide consumer action group that you control as a contributor, say, in California. Right. Let's say one, once a year you want you add $2 to the bill. It goes to the utility company on the strict audit aggregates the contributions and sends it over to what could be called the California Residential Utility Action Group. And uh, that would hire uh, uh, lawyers and accountants, investigators, writers, so that whenever any uh, consumer had a consumer complaint, there's someone to go to. Right. And when they want to deal with utility rates going sky high, there's someone to go to, uh, someone who's full-time, skilled, and is organized throughout the state. doesn't cost the taxpayer a thing. I think Governor Brown is considering it now, and Ella Grasso in Connecticut. Governor Brown in Ohio Governor is considering it. Is, I mean, uh, Governor Brown of California. But that's the key thing, because you've got hundreds of thousands of people I guess of Governor Brown, Jerry Brown, was the governor of California back in 1976. Yeah. And this oh, wait, backs the he still is. Chris Utilities. So they, awesome. They don't like it. But uh, the, they, have you heard from them at all? No, you bring these yeah. things up. What do they? Oh. What do they say to you? Every, it's the same thing. All they say is it's going to increase the the for, uh, cost of the consumer. Anything the consumer tries to do individually or as a group to get justice, the utility says it's going to increase your bill. Why would that increase the bill? Of course it wouldn't. I mean, the consumers are not about to organize on a statewide basis. This is 1976 in California in order to increase their bill. Oh, but uh, you know, this is what was kind happening of, in 1976. This is the kind of, uh, uh, it's still uh, happening uh, in 2017. Uh, uh, song and dance is coming out of the utilities. Would you like to see the uh, the candidates, uh, whichever party they're running for, come out with something like in a platform advocating some consumer uh, yeah. uh, kind of groups or something to protect the consumer, which is yeah. all of us, then they also are consumers. See, most of the candidates aren't specific enough. They all say, you know, we're all for this and that, better healthy economy and so on. But when it comes down to, are, are you for, you know, consumer class actions? Are you for uh, these checkoff systems? Are you for uh, the things that really count for people and their standard of living and sense of well-being? They start, you know, avoiding it. They stay on a very, very high level. <coughs> Too many of these candidates are like Tweedledum on one hand and <laughs> Tweedledee, uh, you know, on the other. And uh, that's, that's because people don't pin them down enough. They don't pin them down enough to specifics. We're going to put out a platform, a consumer platform, which in effect said, okay, candidates, you're for the consumer? Let's see. Are you for the consumer advocacy bill? Let's pass Congress, and President Ford may veto it. Uh, are you for, for all these things? That's the key. But you have to get them down to specifics. The president Absolutely. Ford was the president and, You know, the they're masters. They're the absolute superior masters of the country in on. dodging questions and evading questions. There's just nobody come close to them. You look at the Meet the Press or Issues and Answers and Face the Nation on Sunday, and I they slide it. around these questions. And I feel sorry for the reporters trying to yes, ask them. Well, I, I, never, I never slid around any of them. I love that. <laughs> Answered uh, Ralph to the best of my ability. I answered those questions. I mean, you like give, me, senators, I give know. me a yes. question. Give me a question on the consumer basis, and I'll try to help you on that. You're, you're, Wait. you're absolutely Wait, right. Ralph. I'll give you a question. Okay. You think consumers are getting cheated in the marketplace, Senator? In some areas. <laughs> <laughs> illustration of your point. You covered it and uh, it's like saying you may be right. That's right, you're off the hook. We'll take a break. We're coming right back. Thank you, Senator. Are you 50 to 85? About past or present no. healthy? No. one 435 1114 or visit us online at colonialpen.com. Call or click now. Oh. Don't play with pain. Stay tuned for great news. If you or a loved one had an IVC filter placed to prevent blood clots from traveling to your heart or lungs and suffered an injury, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. For that's 1-800-819-7814. which ought to bring a lump to their throats upstairs. Uh, <laughs> they probably think, oh, oh, here it goes. But uh, not only television, but all the media and advertising. Um, yep. What, what do you think of it generally? Do you think it's getting any better? 
uh, as far as the truth and the... <laughs> some of it is getting better in the sense that the, some of the advertisers are policing themselves a little bit through an outfit in New York uh, where complaints are sent to. But the, the problem with, with advertising is that uh, if it doesn't give the consumer information and doesn't give the consumer a chance to compare products, uh, it loses its purpose, even though it's very entertaining. Uh, some of my favorite uh, uh, no-no ads, for example, one tire company once had an ad all over the country said, our tire stops 25% quicker, period. Oh, yes, that was First good. question, quicker than what? 